Hey guys, so today I am going to answer a subscriber question. And the question in question was, Frederick, what are some programming skills that can only be harnessed you with experience? So let's get into it. Well, to my mind, there are three things that, well, just off the top of my head, that I can think of that would probably like fall into this category. These are things that you can't learn from books. It's not possible. And uh, let's start with the easiest, easier ones. Uh, number one would be hacking, like pen, pen testing or penetration testing, security auditing and things of this nature. You can learn the theory about this and you can learn the different attack, attack types and so forth, but it is extremely hard to become very proficient in this skill without having a mentor or having a genuine personal interest into this. It's almost impossible, I would say. It's a, I mean, it's vital to do experimentation and play around with things and like get your hands dirty with this. And it takes, a, because you almost develop this sixth sense for how other people write their software. So when you know all of the exploits that are available to you and the different attack vectors that you can use, that's, a, that's, just, the that's just the first step. But then you need to actually have, a, have, a, have an understanding of other systems and have a good, good kind of gut feeling almost for how a system is structured in order to figure, test things because that's basically what it comes down to. You know the different exploits that you can try and then you try different things until something clicks and you see that oh you could actually do something here and then you, you follow that thread until you see how far you can take, you can take that exploit. That's one thing. Uh, another thing I would say is uh, operations. It's something that I would argue that it's almost impossible to learn by just reading books or like doing hobby projects. Operations and uh, handle or DevOps, whichever like whichever you want want to, well, whichever you prefer, is like running something on your local computer and spinning up some services or setting up some access control systems and things of this nature. It's very hard to get a good, like you get good at that if you're not doing it at a large scale, especially like access control and things of this nature. I mean, at, if you have a role system at small scale with a few basic or user admin, I mean, that's nothing. When you get up to the really more, like the more sophisticated systems where you have very complex roles and access control, that's when, you know, that's when you really need to test yourself and it gets a lot more, a lot trickier, especially if you have a very, let's say you have a very big distributed system and you have a bunch of different services that need to talk to each other and somehow you need to synchronize all of this. Uh, that is, uh, it's a very tricky problem. And same thing goes for provisioning, like provisioning a small v VM somewhere isn't really a problem but if you have maybe hundreds of of these different instances running and you need to think about how to uh, classify the different like you, you might even have a a company where you as an operations person basically are responsible not only for the operations part of running the system but also making sure that the developers have their own environments they have different types of environments and they should be provisioned in a certain fashion I mean, that's a very, very tricky problem to solve. It requires a lot of experience and skill to find good solutions and good architecture making, you know, in order to make good architectural decisions here, you pretty much need to work with a very complicated system to understand the sort of considerations that you have to make. I mean, storage is another thing. And then you have performance metrics gathering. I mean, I've seen like a large scale system can become a real cluster fluff of problems. If, uh, if it gets complicated enough. So it's, uh, and you can't really understand that from just reading. That's fairly tricky. And then we have CSS, uh, if we're gonna go into front end land now. So CSS is one of those things that it's also, I mean, it's impossible to get good at it without experience. Uh, CSS is a skill that you master for pain and failing and reading a, like a shit ton of blogs and like looking at examples and playing around with things and just getting your hands dirty. It's almost impossible to, to, to be good at this without actually 
like really, really playing around with it. You're going to have to do that for quite some time in order to master it. You can learn tools that will help you get like better fairly quickly than other people, like learning good architectural, like CSS architectures and things of this nature. But uh, it's uh, it's something that you really, really, really need to get your hands dirty with. I mean, the core question here is like, I mean, uh, anything requires experience and high, in my world, hands-on experience to get really good at, but these are just some of the things that I can kind of off the bat, uh, top of my head mention. And I will give you one final one, which is going to be to make good software, uh, software architecture decisions, like being able to, well, basically make good design decisions within software development. So just uh, the core, core of what you're doing, basically, that's also something that you need to have fairly hands-on experience with. Because I, I can promise you, it doesn't matter how many like programming patterns you know or things of this nature like you can know them all but it's really only when you start re understanding how to how to understand other people or how to understand business requirements and how to map that into the so like the architectural decisions that you have to make that's when you start to start uh, you really start to understand what software development actually is about and to give you some type of summary that for what at least how I think about this, basically what you do like is that you convert the needs of a third party, like a company or a client or something like that. You convert what they have in their heads, you try to convert that into code somehow. And the architectural decisions that you're going to make should be based upon those needs. So after doing this over and over and over and understanding other people and their needs, and then you kind of get to a point where you kind of know where you're, like what type of architecture you're go you should go for. And you know that more because you know you've, you've been through this dance so many times that you can almost predict what's going to come after that. You don't necessarily write that code immediately, but you go with a solution that you know, know is going to be able to very likely scale in the direction that the next set of requirements is going to be, like the path that your next set of requirements is going to put you on. And that's at least something that I've found to be very true. Uh, in the beginning, I mean, I read all the books for like domain driven design, all of this stuff. It was only after a few years of working and finally realized, I understand, I almost, at some, at one point, I almost gave up on some of these patterns. But after a while of working, I started seeing a recurring pattern in the requirements and the outcome of building things. Like I built things based on my requirements and I started seeing this pattern and I finally started to see this thread thread between all these books and reality. I didn't. Un I thought I understood it when I first read these books. I thought, "Oh, this is very clever," and I thought I really got it, but I didn't get it. And then I felt like a failure. And after a few years of working, I realized that, "Hey, um, I, I, I understand this now. I, I thought I understood it. I didn't. I, I kind of understood it, but now I really understand it." That's the sensation I had anyway. So what I want you to take away from this is that. Skills within software development that I will argue is all, they are, it's all but impossible to get good at these things without like hands-on experience and mentoring and like things of this nature. This is not something you get good at from academics. Is hacking like pen, pen testing stuff of this nature. Like you need to have the like an experience working with this sort of thing to get a feel for how systems are usually designed and what common exploits are available to uh, are going to be available to you and how to kind of figure out different ways of trying testing out attack ve attack vectors apart from that operations it's very very easy to do some basic stuff on your laptop or at a very small scale but at really large scale operations is a very very hard and tricky thing it's a full-time job with write and if you have it's, it's kind of ungrateful as well, because if your operations people are doing everything correctly, nothing happens. But if they're do not doing everything correctly, it's very likely that they are going, like, you're going to notice a company-wide loss in productivity. So it's a very tricky thing. 
CSS in front-end world is something that you absolutely need to have hands-on experience with. It's very hard to get really good at that by just reading things. You should read things and get inspired by other people, but it's important for you to understand all the different like your properties and how they affect different elements and how they play to with play with each other. And finally, just software uh, software design architecture and things of this nature, being able to understand like, uh, understanding how the things that you read in, read in books and the things that you learn in school actually tie into business requirements because it's not until you, you may think that you understand these software design books and patterns and so forth when you start reading them in school, but I can promise you that you don't know how this ties into reality until you actually start getting really good at understanding business requirements and the needs of, of a company because uh, it's really, well, that's, that, if you haven't really thought about it, a lot of these uh, practices and patterns come from that. They get designed by people who get enough business requirements and they work and then they realize that, well, this is a very common need from the business and this is a pretty good solution to this sort of problem. And now we can maybe generalize this just slightly so that it's a more scalable solution than what, would have, what, what we would have made if we just made you know, the easy solution over and over and over. So that's going to be my answer. Have a great day.